In September of 2023, Jamie Malson made headlines when he presented two allegedly non-human bodies to a room full of astonished officials at the Mexican Congress. Malson, who had been investigating alien phenomena for decades, stood alongside a team of scientists as he unveiled the corpses, which to him was a significant watershed moment in the study of extraterrestrial life. Mao San and the team had recovered these bodies from Cusco, Peru. Astonishingly, they were unlike anything they had ever encountered. This was a huge deal because these were different from your typical mummies. They had inhuman characteristics, three-fingered hands, no teeth, and stereoscopic vision. In addition to this, they also had retractable necks and long skulls that were more typical of birds than humans. They even had them carbon dated by UNAM, or the National Autonomous University of Mexico, and they suggested that these beings were well over 1,000 years old. However, that's not even the strangest part. Get this, out of the entire genetic makeup of these mummies, 30% was unknown and had never been seen before. Mao San's presentation here was just one part of a much larger event at the Mexican Congress, which also featured testimony from U.S. and Mexican officials on the topic of Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAPs. In fact, this is where Abraham Avi Loeb, the director of the Harvard Astronomy Department, called on the Mexican government to allow international scientists to study the specimens further, while retired U.S. Navy pilot Ryan Graves spoke about his own experiences with UAPs and the threat they posed to national security. But there was a backlash, of course, pointing out that these mummies were coated in what appeared to be sand, which is a very unusual feature for fossils that had been supposedly rigorously analyzed for any anomalies. Regardless of this, Mao San was unfettered and was adamant that these were not only genuine, but the result of a UFO wreckage somewhere along the way, and found explicitly in the diatom mines. Now, he never claimed that they were aliens, but admitted that they were intelligent beings who existed on this planet. And the most disturbing part of this whole ordeal was probably what was in these mummies. Now, according to an x-ray, at least one of the beings showed that they carried eggs with embryos inside of them. Additionally, they even possessed implants of very rare deadly metals, cadmium and osmium. Now, cadmium itself is carcinogenic and so deadly that it's banned in the US. Osmium, interestingly, is the densest naturally occurring element and is also extremely deadly to human beings. But even as the Mexican Congress grappled with the implications of Mao San's discovery, this same man was about to unfold another shocking development, one that could have implications so deadly that the Peruvian government tried to step in and forcefully seize it. In late 2023 or early 2024, another discovery was made by Mao San, a set of alleged alien mummies, but this time, it gets stranger. This particular mummy that Mao San found wasn't alone, and he named it Montserrat, affectionately. However, its partner wasn't what you're probably thinking. It wasn't a mate, a relative, or a twin. It was a tiny tridactyl fetus inside of its body. So before we go any further, I want to add that Mao San wasn't just some crackpot scientist who came up with this. He had legitimate researchers backing his claims up. You had John McDowell, who is a forensic odontologist and retired professor from the University of Colorado. William Rodriguez, who is a forensic anthropologist for the Maryland State Medical Examiner. And Dr. James Caruso, who's a medical examiner from Denver, Colorado, all of whom examined these mummies and came to one startling conclusion. They're the real deal, folks. Mao San, who is preparing for another conference to reveal his discovery following the recent one about the embryo, aimed to blow his audience away to such an extent that they might even contemplate rewriting history. 
However, things went differently than planned, and the day came and Mao San was setting up his press presentation when suddenly government agents, well, an organized group of officials from the Peruvian Ministry of Culture stormed in, and with them was a team of specialized police officers ready to seize the mummified body and put an end to this whole crazy affair. Unfortunately for them, there was nothing. Montserrat wasn't there, and the physical mummy was nowhere to be found. Mousen and his team were just showing a video and the officials were left standing there. They had no choice but to sit down and watch the presentation along with everyone else. Now, the Peruvian government maintains that these alien mummies are nothing more than dolls made from human bones, likely dug up by grave robbers and sold on the black market. And sure, that's a possibility, but Mousen and his team aren't buying it. And suppose the Peruvian government really does believe this. Why are they so adamant about seizing evidence and covering this kind of stuff up? I mean, come on guys, the government never does things like that, right? Well, I'll tell you that Mao San and his team do not buy the explanation. They believe that Montserrat and her unborn child represent a new form of life possibly the result of genetic engineering by some advanced extraterrestrial civilization. Could it be Nephilim, perhaps? Mao San remains convinced that the truth is still out there, and he firmly believes we are not alone in this universe, and it's vital to embrace this reality. In fact, from the Nazca lines to the pregnant mummy of Peru, it seems that the truth is hiding just beyond the veil of what we can see. So what do you folks think? Are these mummies the real deal, or just an elaborate hoax pushed by grave robbers and con artists? Is there really a new form of life waiting to be discovered, or are we all just getting carried away by our own imaginations, desperate to believe in something bigger than ourselves? Unfortunately, the truth behind these discoveries and why the Peruvian government was adamant about seizing the mummies will remain a mystery. In 2018, photographer Chi Kelly embarked on a picturesque visit to Loch Ness Lake with her husband. The day was a perfect setting for her photography passion, with the weather playing along. And as they leisurely strolled along the lake's banks, a sight caught their attention, something emerging from the water that seemed out of place, sparking a sense of mystery and intrigue. They thought quickly on their feet, and she began snapping photos, a lot of photos, around 70 to be exact. And so the figure they saw in the water resubmerged. She and her husband had no idea what they saw, but they knew it was out of the ordinary. Now you can imagine how excited she was after having snapped so many photos of whatever this was, right? With a sense of anticipation, her and her husband returned home eager to review the photographs. However, their excitement was met with disappointment. Most of the images didn't meet their expectations, and she was left with a feeling of uncertainty. She had captured something unexplainable, but the quality wasn't enough for public consumption, so she decided to keep it to herself for the time being. However, fast forward a few years to around 2022, and she decided to release the images to the press. Now, as you can imagine, it caused quite the stir, it wasn't so much that the pictures themselves were compelling, still, they can turn these into a video with the help because she had taken so many so quickly. Now, fortunately, she found support from the Cryptid Factor podcast, and they meticulously analyzed the 71 images, examining their metadata and timestamps. With their expertise, they were able to arrange the images in a logical sequence, correlating the background objects in each frame. The result was a compelling video that seemed to depict the elusive Loch Ness monster in motion. Well, there's good news and bad news, of course. The good news is that the quality of this particular set of images is fantastic. It's in focus, it's sharp, and it was shot with a DSLR, not on a potato, thankfully. Unfortunately, while the images are fantastic, we don't get to see a whole lot of what's being examined. This is because it never fully revealed itself out of the water. 
Of course, many supposed sightings of the Loch Ness Monster continue to inundate society through the years. In fact, many people blame floating logs and other debris from the shore as the Loch Ness Monster. However, this footage is so impactful because of the quality of the different footage and the fact that we get to see how it moves. Hopefully, this will give us more insight into what truly resides in the lake. I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts as well. Unfortunately, while very convincing, the identity of what was photographed that day will remain inconclusive. In the summer of 2023, a cattle rancher in Colorado's San Luis Valley made a horrific discovery one morning when checking on his livestock. As he made his rounds, he worked his way up to a river where he found the carcass of an animal. Disturbingly, he realized that this was one of his favorite cows that had been missing, and even worse was the condition that he had found it. When he first found this cow, he thought to himself that it just died next to the water's edge, but then he began to notice the physical condition it was in. Her udders had been wholly removed, and he was taken aback by this and decided to inspect closer. He then realized that her female organs all around the vaginal area had been entirely and cleanly removed. Even stranger was the fact that there was zero blood around or on the body and no tracks anywhere. It was just as if this body had just been dumped here. And as he inspected these bizarre wounds closer, he could clearly see that whoever or whatever inflicted this bizarre act of brutality on this poor cow, this wasn't something you could have just done with a knife. He could see that the cuts were not just superficial incisions, they appeared to have been cut and cauterized at the same time. Now, you tell me what is capable of doing that. A laser is capable of doing that. The cattle rancher, Mike Duran, had one thought that ran through his mind, their back. He knew what had occurred was not done from something in this world. He wasn't exactly sure if this was aliens, but it was not done by people. In fact, just a few months before this event took place, on April 19th, 2023, the Madison County Sheriff's Office released an official statement about the death and mutilation of six cattle. What was so shocking about this particular statement was the grisly and disturbing details about how these cows had their tongues and parts of their flesh precisely removed. None of these cows seemed to struggle in any way, and it makes you wonder what was happening. Interestingly, a paranormal investigator named Chuck Zakowski spoke to the New Yorker and explained that these cases go all the way back to 1869. In the context of cattle mutilations, the removal of animal organs and even tongues was a sign that these were done by extraterrestrials. In addition, many mutilations and other odd signs were documented, such as cows being completely drained of blood, the removal of their sex organs, and in some cases, although rare, were circular depressions in the surrounding grass. Another alarming detail is that some of these cattle have been found with broken legs, which means that they were dropped from a great height. However, not everyone buys into the whole cattle mutilation being done by extraterrestrials theory. In fact, an Arkansas police sergeant named Rick O'Kelly decided to carry out his own experiment to explain what's happening here is just simply decomposition working as intended. Now, he claimed that what's happening is that a couple of hours after being dead, the animals would start to bloat and they would force out their organs. The animal's tongue, the eyes, all their inner organs were gone as they're forced out. As far as the lack of blood and the strange surgical-like incisions found on these cattle, he explained that these could just be the results of blowflies who eat all that up very quickly. I mean, the maggots themselves act as amazing surgeons and they take care of it very quickly. So what do you guys think? Are there significant amounts of cattle mutilation data to support the fact that they are indeed being taken by otherworldly forces or is there a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this happening? Unfortunately, the truth behind the entire cattle mutilation phenomenon and what happened to Michael Durant's cow will probably always remain a mystery. We've all seen those odd time traveler photos that have been circulating around the internet for years. However, a couple recently have continued to stir controversy. 
In fact, footage dating back to 1938 has been convincing enough to prove we're either living in an alternate timeline or some definite time travel is happening. In the footage in question, this particular woman, clearly dressed in a 1930s style, can be seen lowering an object from her ear. Now, interestingly, this object is also dark and hand-sized with what appeared to be the same dimensions as a modern mobile phone. But guys, it gets even crazier. The story goes that once this theory grew more popular, a YouTuber claimed that the woman seen in this clip was actually their great-grandmother, a woman named Gertrude Jones. And get this, they were using an actual mobile phone. Gertrude was only 17 years old at the time of this footage, and she remembers it very clearly. Interestingly enough, the phone that this woman was using was, at the time, an experimental device developed by a renowned industrial giant at their factory in Leominster, Massachusetts. This company is known as DuPont. Apparently, wireless telephones were being experimented with, and Gertrude, along with five other women, was actually given these phones to test out for an entire week. Now, another strange photo captured in September of 1943 could also potentially indicate smartphone usage. However, it's just a theory, of course. You guys decide. This photo, snapped during a casual day on a beach in Cornwall, shows many things. Families enjoying themselves, sunbathers, and the man who appears to be texting? No, just kidding. But it does look like he's staring down at something. And when you look closer at the image, it does not appear that he's holding an object, especially a phone. Perhaps he's fiddling with something in his hands or his fingers, but of course, I could be wrong. However, many disagree with my opinion and believe he is texting someone, possibly his government handler from the year 2176, the year he was sent back from. I'm just kidding. But there are a lot of people who believe this picture is proof of time travel. I'd like to know your thoughts on the whole time travel phenomenon. Other photographs circulating online have really riled people up about the whole thing. Personally speaking, I've not come across a photograph definitive enough to make me believe that time travel is real, as cool as it would be. Regarding time travel and bringing smartphones back to the 1940s and 30s, well, folks, that remains a mystery. In April of 2024, Eric Altman, the director of the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society, got a call that would change everything. Now, Eric had been investigating Bigfoot sightings for years, but nothing could have properly prepared him for this. You see, four men out scouting for turkey in the dense forest of Blair County had stumbled upon something strange. They were about 200 yards from their cars deep in the woods when one of them spotted it a massive five-toed human-like footprint sunk into the mud at the edge of a swampy area. So the man called his buddies over and together they found three more tracks, each one as big and bizarre as the first. Now these were no ordinary men, they were experienced hunters, guys who knew the woods like the back of their hand. They'd seen bear tracks, deer tracks, all kinds of animal prints, but never anything like this. And these tracks were huge, mind you. 15 inches long, 7 inches wide, with each toe clearly defined. And they were deep, sunk a good 2 inches into the soft, wet earth. And so the men knew they had found something special, something that couldn't be explained away as a hoax or a misidentification. So they snapped photos of the prints and sent them off to Eric, hoping he could possibly shed some light on this mystery. He'd seen his fair share of alleged Bigfoot tracks over the years, but they were so clear and perfect that they almost looked fake. But Eric had actually spoken to these witnesses on the phone and he could tell that the man was shaken up, excited, and very sincere, that this was no hoaxer or attention seeker. This was a man who had seen something he couldn't explain, something that had changed his world. And so then, Eric put together a team, headed out to the site, and hoped to find more evidence. When they got there, they found that one of the prints had been washed away by the rain, but three were still intact. And so they carefully photographed and cast the prints, marveling at the size and detail of each one. And as the cast were drawing, the team searched the area, looking for hair, scat, or any other sign that the creature had left those tracks was still there. But they came up empty-handed. 
It was as if the beast had appeared out of nowhere, left its mark, and then vanished back into the forest. Eric sent the photos and cast off to some of the biggest names in the Bigfoot world, like Jeff Meldrum, Cliff Barockman, and their reactions were just as shocked as Eric. Cliff even said that the prints were either real or a hoax, while Dr. Meldrum couldn't find any red flags either, and it was starting to look like they might have the real thing on their hands. But Eric and his team are still out there combing through the woods of Pennsylvania, looking for any sign of this elusive being. They know that the odds are stacked against them and that they might search for years and never find anything as compelling as the tracks they unveiled in Blair County. Interestingly, Blair County and the entire state of Pennsylvania is a hotbed of Bigfoot eyewitness sightings, and every day brings the possibility of a new discovery, a new piece of evidence that could blow the whole mystery wide open. And so Eric and his team just continue to search in hopes that one day they might find the missing piece of the puzzle the proof they've all been looking for. Now, as for the men who found those tracks, well, their lives are changed forever. They've seen something that most people can only dream of, something that will defy explanation and challenge everything we think we know about the world. And even if they never see another track or catch a glimpse of what made it, they'll always have that moment. Now, obviously, Bigfoot tracks are nothing new, but what should be alarming is the sheer volume of tracks that have been discovered and casted. I mean, surely there is something going on, right? Is it possible there is a human biped eluding human discovery all around the globe? Who knows? Sadly, we'll probably never know the answer. Well, this next story doesn't involve aliens or Bigfoot, but it's certainly strange and mysterious. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. A woman by the name of Moluwork Amba has a strange, unnatural superpower, if you could call it that. Some who believe her are convinced it's an act of God. Oddly enough, she has been tested rigorously by numerous doctors all across India and Dubai, and nobody can explain this bizarre phenomenon let alone how she is still alive. Amba resides in Gemma, Ethiopia, and has a beautiful, healthy daughter. However, her superpower is that she has not had a meal or drank anything since she was 10 years old. 16 years without any food or water, all because she claims that she has had no appetite. As completely outlandish as the sounds, a Guinness World Record holder and UK-based YouTuber named Drew Binsky visited her to see if she was telling the truth and how she was even surviving. Fortunately for her, she apparently lives a pretty normal life. She grows vegetables, tends to her garden, and ironically enough, loves to cook and prepare food for others. And as you can imagine, when you don't eat or drink anything for 16 years, she does not urinate or defecate, and hasn't. Apparently, when she was pregnant with her daughter, she was given glucose infusions to help supplement her body's natural energy. She was not able to breastfeed because she wasn't able to produce milk, and it sounds like she just had to use formula. Now, remember that this is such an anomaly that she was tested to an extreme degree. In fact, she went through years of testing by different doctors from Ethiopia all the way to Dubai as previously stated. All of them deemed her to be in perfect health. Something else they noted that was interesting is that they didn't find any food, water, or waste products in her digestive tract. In addition to this, she also had extensive mental health screening where, again, they weren't able to find anything wrong with her. And in a case like this, nobody has any explanation for how she can survive. In her words, she believes this is the work of God and she will continue to never eat again. Now, could she be a fraud? Of course. But I found it interesting that everybody who's apparently looked into this case and has visited her in person to try and find any holes in her story or that somebody is covering up for her somewhere, nothing, there's nothing. How this woman is still alive and continually surviving in what appears to be relatively good health will probably forever remain unknown. In 1986, a photography professor at the University of Pavia had an experience he'll never forget. So one summer evening, he was experimenting with how dogs visually perceive the world, 
And part of his analysis is whether they can see in color or only see in black and white. And all of a sudden, he notices something. The story goes that he turns around and this being is standing before him and he has no other words to describe it than otherworldly. But this thing has very bizarre features and even stranger is the outfit that it's wearing. It appears to have a tight fitting blue green suit resembling almost a second skin and it has long thin hands and oval shaped face with a flattened nose and large eyes. Even more strange is the headset apparatus that it has with what appears to be antenna sticking out the top. Now this photography professor is completely overtaken by shock and fear and has no idea what to do about this strange unearthly being in front of him. So he does the only thing he knows how to do, take pictures. And these folks are the supposed photos this anonymous professor took that evening. He was able to snap five shots before this thing apparently vanished into thin air and was gone in an instant. Now, as you can imagine, he's probably thinking he lost his mind and has no idea how he will show this to anyone. And he's terrified because at this time, sharing this kind of stuff could cost him his entire career. Now, it's unclear how much time had passed between when he took these pictures and when he decided he was finally going to share them. But at some point, he submitted them to a publication known as Set, which is a large political and lifestyle magazine based in Milan. Now, after submitting these photographs to this publication, they weren't even sure what to make of it. They thought that this professor was utterly full of it. Still, he was very adamant about staying anonymous due to his career and who he was in his profession. He didn't want anything for it. He didn't want notoriety. He didn't want money. The poor guy just wanted answers. So after going over it for some time, the publication finally decided that they were going to release it. And as you can imagine, it set off a firestorm. Many were convinced that this was the smoking gun that we needed to prove that we were not alone in the universe. Many, however, did not buy what was put in front of them. I mean, if you look at the photos, many claim that this was just photography trickery and just someone in a suit posing. After all, this is a photography professor, so he could have quickly done some post-production work like double exposure. However, as strange as all the circumstances surrounding this bizarre event, they haven't been officially debunked, although that's not really saying much. Interestingly, the photography professor at the time provided the exact camera settings he used, including the lens and everything. He used a Nikon camera with a motor-driven 55 millimeter lens. During the shoot, he had the camera set to a macro setting, a 3.5 aperture, and a shutter speed of 1 4 a second on polychrome film with 40 ISO setting. Now, if you know anything about film, polychrome was Polaroid's 35 millimeter instant film. It was their attempt to combine the quality of shooting on color slide film with the convenience of getting quick results. But unfortunately, after launching in 1977, well, it proved to be a massive commercial failure and was quickly discontinued. Now, if you're not a photography nerd, then you'll understand that these photographs are so incredibly blurry because the dude was shooting at one fourth of a second. This being was supposedly writhing around during its sudden appearance as well, so that could explain why the movement was strange, but it doesn't explain the actual photographs themselves and why they look the way they do. In my opinion, this last story is almost comical just because it's so strange. And also, Italy between the 1950s and the 90s were a hotbed of weird occult and UFO stories that circulated around. And additionally, this particular era of UFO and paranormal magazine publications were littered with anything they can get their hands on. Even the most vague, ambiguous accounts were stuffed in there, including anonymous individuals and people with little credibility. I'm not talking about their status in society. The details they provided were often poor and contradictory, and many of the accounts were just not great. However, there is a silver lining to this black cloud. There were some gems in this time too that made you wonder, but unfortunately, there were few. Like everything else in today's video, the truth about these photographs and what they really are will remain inconclusive. And because you guys made it this far into the video, I want you to all comment down below proof or it didn't happen. So that way I know who made it to the end of the video and who didn't. And if you guys enjoy this new series I've called Disturbing Photographs and Evidence and you want to see more, then let me know. Also, smack that like and subscribe button too and never forget, I love you all, keep an open mind, and I'll see you all in the very next episode.